Shane. Thank you for joining me in my studio today for another episode of Between Layers. Today I'm going to show you three techniques to make your samples, your beats or just your music in general sound more interesting by breaking down the sample that I made in last week's episode of Sample Making. <sighs> The first thing I try to play with in my samples is the width of the mix. So here's what I did in the example that we're working with today. The whole thing starts with the guitar which is recorded with one mic only. There's no reverb on it or anything so that's about as mono as it gets which leaves a lot of room for the sound to expand. After just one bar of that very narrow guitar I'm starting to fade in another guitar with the same chords which is panned to the left while automating the pan of the first guitar to move to the right. We're now two bars in and I'm starting to fade in an ambience recording that I did by by placing my microphone in my room and running the guitar that I already recorded through my speakers to basically capture the natural room reverb of my space. So just in those first four bars I'm going from mono to a little stereo to full width which is a very nice and subtle way to start off the track and build some tension and just so you know what I'm talking about I'm going to play the guitar just mono and then with all the stuff that I did. start experimenting with this technique we can go from mono to stereo instantly or go from very wide to very narrow to kind of take energy away which is actually what I did with the piano at the end of my sample so I just think the idea of variating width is a very useful tool to have so make sure to keep it in your music creation toolbox I'm always looking for ways to keep my samples interesting while not introducing too many new elements that make everything sound confusing and not really that cohesive anymore. To achieve that I generally do two things. I take a melody that was already introduced and just play the exact same thing or a slight variation of it with a different instrument or I take an instrument that was already introduced and just let that play different chords, a different melody or just process it differently. Here's an example for that. We're going to go to the beginning of the sample again and pay some attention to what the flute is doing. going all the way to the end and listen to the choir. Having that melody at the beginning and the end really ties the whole sample together while still keeping things fresh by using different instruments to play the same melody. Another example within that sample is that the whole thing consists of four chords only but I'm keeping things interesting by using four different instruments to play those chords. So start recycling your melodies, your harmonies and your instruments to keep things interesting without losing cohesiveness. The third technique is pretty obvious but hard to keep in mind in today's age of monotone music and brick wall limited masters which is having different levels of energy throughout your track. So how do you variate energy? Some examples are instrumentation, frequencies, width, tempo, loudness and more. Let me know in the comments below how you take away or build energy. Here are some ways that I did it in my sample. Let's just look at the first eight bars so you get an idea of what you can do. As I already showed you, we're starting with a mono guitar low volume very narrow which results in low energy we're introducing the second guitar the flute and some chants the increase in volume and instrumentation really builds up the energy here i'm introducing a bass to widen the frequency spectrum while the chants are building tension a very short low volume pause takes the energy away abruptly to make the job afterwards feel even more energetic now i'm introducing drums a choir a bass that's even lower and some arpeggios 
So I'm increasing instrumentation, I'm increasing volume, I'm increasing width and the frequency spectrum, which makes this part really stand out. When I first started thinking about this, it really helped me to draw an imaginary line of the energy level throughout my tracks. So if yours is just flat, you should think about what you can do to change that. I really hope that this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a part two with even more techniques to make your music more interesting. The stems of the sample that I showed you are on my Patreon already, but I just uploaded every single line from both choirs that I did. So you get an insight on how I build those or just use them in your own music. You can support what I do over there or right here by liking or subscribing. As always, I really appreciate you taking your time watching this and I'll see you next Sunday. Love.